Wow. <laughs> Dude, look at that. That is a whole lot of super cedar. Whoa. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. This week we've got a very special mail call from one of our Bassin buds. And I've got a hunch it's all about Rebel Lures. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish it old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from the golden era of bass fishing. Stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know when we post a new video like this one. So before we get started with today's mail call, I do kind of want to set the stage a little bit for how we got here. I have been on a little bit of a rebel kick as of late, and as I'm getting more uh, involved in Facebook and some of the forums, i got to tell you, the rebel collectors are one of the most rabid, knowledgeable bunch of lure collectors that are out there. I was talking to my bass and bud, John Burns, and John had noticed something over my shoulder in the retro bass and display. And it is this select the color lure kit. Being a rebel junkie, he just had to have one and he inquired if he could trade for this. Well, I wasn't willing to give this one up, but as you guys know, if I've got one, I've got none. And I just happen to have three different kits of this. One I've got on display. Uh, one I've already cracked open and I've got it in my color selector tackle box ready for an upcoming episode. And a third I was willing to part with. So I sent John that kit as well as some new in the package Rebel Rednecks. In return, John sent me a mystery pack of old school, I'm assuming new in the package Rebel Baits. I am going to crack that open right now for the first time on camera. I don't know what we're going to find. I'm pretty pumped about it. I know that John has been lighting me up about when I'm going to do this unboxing and I have been traveling like crazy, as you guys know, and I just have not had time to sit down in the studio and do some unboxings. As a result, I've got a little bit of a backlog, a good problem to have, but over the next couple weeks, we're going to get through some of the stuff that I've got under my desk. So let me get this area cleaned up and we will crack open our care pack of Rebel Baits. So here it is. This is a solid box and you could only imagine it's been driving me a little bit nuts to have this thing sitting under my desk for the past couple weeks. So I am just as excited as anybody to crack this thing open. <laughs> First off, I see some nice bubble wrap. That's always exciting. Ah, it could be anything in there. Whoa. Um, right out of the gates, I see a ton of really, really cool stuff. All right, what's the first thing? Holy cow. Look at that. Rebel Ultralights. Mighty Miniatures. Big on action, proven ultralight producers. Check this out, guys. This is a uh, new old stock Rebel package. You can tell because it's got the old school silver packaging that they've long since discontinued. And this looks like a three pack of, what are these? Oh, looks like three cricket hoppers. Oh, that is awesome. Um, that is 100% gonna be a display piece and I am not gonna crack that open. I've got some cricket hoppers that I've been meaning to fish a little bit more often. But dude, that right there is worth the price of admission. That's awesome. I don't think I've ever seen that kit before. Bass and Buds, when we um, do an Ultralight episode, I will definitely read the back of that. But that right there 
is awesome. Okay, so what else do we have here? Dave's Nitro Shiner. Huh, I don't even know what that is. That is really cool. That looks a whole lot like some sort of storm bait, actually. But it's called Dave's Nitro Shiner. I have no idea. Um, that is really cool, though. Okay. Uh, Dave's Lures, LLC, Norman, Oklahoma. Nice. Looks like there's another Dave's Shiner here in a standard Fire Tiger color. Ooh, that is a cool little bait. I'm going to have to ask John about that, but I'm guessing that's some sort of walleye type minnow bait. A little bit of a deep diver. Oh, wow. This is a cool display piece. Old Blakemore Roadrunners. Look at that. And this is the Branson bug. Obviously, Branson, Missouri. Not just for country music, huh? But check that thing out. That is a really cool... Looks like there's... 12 of them on the card. And that card is going to stay intact. Right out of the gates, I think John is sending me a lot of stuff that I am going to be uh, collecting and not casting. Which is unusual for me, right? Okay, so what do we have here? A Kelly's Striper. Deadly color combinations. Bass can't resist. This looks like some sort of worm there. Um, I'm going to have to rip one of those open and look at that a little bit more closely. But that is pretty cool. looks like it's a pre-rigged worm in an old school purple with uh, white dots. And then this one looks like it is a red with white dots. It's been a hot minute since I talked to John about this, but I've got a feeling he picked this up at a local tackle shop, which is right down the street from him. And those are really cool. Okay, good. We got a couple of, uh, a couple of casters. That's good. Oh, there we go. So there's one more Kelly's worm. You can see what that is. That is a pre-rigged worm, uh, very similar to um, almost the way that they used to rig up the old cream scoundrel. So basically, you rip that thing open, you tie it on your line, maybe out of weight, maybe not, and you give it a whirl. All right, what else do we have in here? Whoa, <laughs> dude, <laughs> looks like a ton of old school gear. Holy cow. Um, I'm going to have to deep dive into this a little bit later, but right out of the gates, check this thing out. Oh, an old Zebco fish scale. You know, it's lucky that we don't catch too many lunkers on this show because I don't have a scale on the boat, or at least they didn't have a scale on the boat, but this is nice. If this thing is accurate, son, I'm going to definitely get that on the old retro wagon and hopefully use that real soon. Looks like we've got some other stuff in here, some hooks, some floats, some good old school gear. Wow. <laughs> I think old John cleaned out the garage, man. There's a ton of stuff in here. All right, what do we have here? Ho, ho, ho. Blue Fox Foxy Jig. We did a really cool walkthrough recently of an old school, I think it was a 1978, 79 Blue Fox catalog, and in it was this Foxy Jig. I actually don't have any Foxy Jigs, so I am super pumped to get a couple. And, yeah, I might be throwing these things around Lake Austin real soon. Silver Dollar Lures. Oh, looks like a sort of a painted Hopkins spoon. That's pretty cool. Uh, I actually just set up one whole tackle box for schooling bass. I've been seeing a ton of schooling bass on these Texas lakes, so um, I'm probably going to rip this sucker open and put that right in my schooling bass box. Awesome. Premium Fishing Tackle, an old school buzz bait. Look at that, I think it's probably a quarter ounce. Oh, very cool, another jigging spoon, awesome. So I can actually cast one and collect one. Oh, an old storm, uh, looks like a jointed deep diving minnow, awesome. That looks like an old one, by the way, too. Huh. 
Ooh, uh, an old Pose Super Seater. What is this model? Let's see here. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the 400 or... Yeah, I think that's the old 400. The old Super Seater Deep Diver. Awesome. A very cool color, by the way. And here's another Pose Super Seater in some different packaging. And this looks like a 300 to me. So this is interesting. If you guys ever see any Pose baits online, there's two different packages that you will see. This is the newer version. This is the one from Yakima Bait Company. And these were assembled in Mexico. These are the original Pose that come in that fish um, sort of uh, pack. I will say, um, I don't know... You know, kind of maybe the quality of these started out okay and got worse. But in general, if you ever see two of these on the shelf, always grab this one. Oh, what is this? Uh, an old Super Fish It from Ronoski. There's a little company that you don't hear too much from anymore. Old Ronoski. Uh, I've actually been wanting to do a little bit more on them. I just don't have a ton of Ronoski baits, but that one, man, um... I'm going to have to decide whether or not I open that or not. That would totally catch fish. It almost looks like a beetle spin with sort of a uh, tube-shaped little minnow on it. And what is this? A swim Gem Brella from Jewel Tackle Company. So that is an old-looking uh, Alabama rig. I mean, I guess if it's an Alabama rig, it's not that old. Um, but that is pretty cool looking. And it's got the nice head on that. Very cool. That looks like a five-arm umbrella rig. Well, I think I made out pretty good on the old trade. I've got to tell you that much. <laughs> oh, man. I've been meaning to grab one of these. The producer's Willy Worm. I have actually got a bunch of producer's baits. It was um, a company that came out, I don't know, it was the 80s or so, but if you ever went to like a sports authority... You would see a discount bin of basically two and three dollar baits, every kind of hard bait, like poppers, crankbaits, you name it. And it was always the producer's company. But one of their most well known and probably, you know, fish catching his baits was this thing. It's called Willie's Worm. It's a little crankbait that I have never actually fished. I've never actually seen one in person. So I've kind of been wanting to get a hold of one for a while. That is awesome. The best part about this is the artwork. Look at this old dude. He's smoking a cigarette and drinking a red, white, and blue beer. <laughs> That's fishing at old school. Oh, ho, ho. little t-shirt action here. Okay, yeah, so I do remember now. So John was talking about this really cool shop that's down the street from him. And this is it, Stoddard's Bait and Tackle. Fishing for memory since 1943. You tell me that doesn't sound like the kind of tackle shop I need to go to. It is located in historic downtown Wetumpka, Alabama. And I will hold this shirt up. And by the way, I will drop all the information down below. Um, but Bass and Buds, if you go here before I go, just don't clear it out. Because I want to do a walkthrough video of this place. And I'm not going to be able to if you guys take all the old school baits. So here's the shirt. Pretty cool. It's got a little crappie on it. And this is definitely on my um, retro roadshow bucket list. Next time I'm in Alabama, I'm going to make sure to swing by here and bring the old camera with. But thank you guys for the shirt. Appreciate you. All right. Holy crap. Wow. <laughs> Dude, look at that. That is a whole lot of super cedar. Whoa. So this is pretty cool. Looks like John sent me every one of his Super Cedar baits. I'm just gonna dump this thing out and see what we got. Holy cow. So that is a ton of baits. Looks like I've got about 25 Super Cedar baits in some old school colors. Woo, man. Check out that. That is a money color. It's silver with a chartreuse head and little green lines on it. Woo! So I'm pretty sure that's the old Super Cedar 400 series. And oh man, that's totally, totally going to be a fisher. 
Let's see what else I've got in the big boys. So there's another 400 in, I think this is yellow crawdad or yellow crawfish pattern. I forget the name of it, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It's mostly yellow, orange belly, brown top. Here's another one in, I think it's called a red crawdad, sort of a red body. And again, a dark top. Oof, man, that's a good looking bait though, isn't it? There's another 400 and sort of a sparkle color. I don't even know what color that is. Maybe that one's aged with time a little bit, huh? Oh wow, this one's a blast from the past. So I'm sure most of my bass and buds know, you guys remember those first like, you know, 15 baits you ever owned? This exact bait and this exact color is one of them. So this is a Pose Super Cedar 400 in a baby bass pattern. That is awesome, awesome bait. It's probably one of the first, I think probably 10 or 15 baits that I ever owned and I never caught a fish on it. It wasn't because um, anything to do with the bait itself. I just didn't fish it a ton and I was mostly fishing farm ponds at that point and as you can imagine, a deep dive in Pose probably ain't gonna be the bait for those kind of waters. So I think I ended up losing that bait at some point. So it is really, really cool to see that bait again. <laughs> Hello, old friend. Here's another 300, and I don't know what color pattern that is, but that is funky. That's some sort of sparkle red crawfish pattern. It's almost got a tomato look to it and a little green on the top, and ooh, man. That's a good looking bait. That is 100% gonna be a fisher. I'm gonna get some new hooks on that and we're gonna go to town. Okay, so there's a bunch of these baits. This is another pose. I don't know what number this is. This might be a model 200 maybe. <clears throat> I don't think it's a dead eye, which is the suspending one because it doesn't look totally like a dead eye. I'm not sure, but that is a pretty cool looking bait. And one that I have actually not fished. I just, for whatever reason, have never fished this particular model in the Super Cedar line. But I've got a couple of them in that old school baby bass pattern. Awesome. Got the same bait in a Tennessee Shad. All right, so what else do we have here? So here is the smallest in the Super Cedar line. I think this is the 1100, if I remember. The numbers are all kind of messed up, but it doesn't necessarily go in exact order. But I'm pretty sure this is the 1100, which is sort of the, it says it's a deep diver, but it's really not that deep of a diver. But that is a money little finesse crankbait. I actually like fishing that one a whole lot. I've got one here in, looks like a baby bass. And then this one, a very Texas-y looking color. A uh, nice sparkle red, check that out. Ooh, nice. All right, what else do we have rounding out the pose selection? Whoo, I see some RC1s and RC3s. The classic bait from Rick Clun, the Bassmaster Classic winning bait, actually. And look at those awesome old school coffin lipped crankbaits. So I always get mixed up, by the way, if the one's a smaller one or the three's a smaller one, but either way, I've got one of the big one here in a bass pattern, which is actually a really, like one of my favorite pose color patterns is this uh, old school bass pattern with the orange belly. And then I've got one, two, three, four of them in the smaller version. Most of them are this, which is, I think that's a green crawdad color. Another old school color that I love. And this one, uh, the sparkle blue back. Woo, man. If that does not scream old school cranking, I don't know what does. Look at that. Oh, man. Awesome. Well, I've got a ton of super cedars <laughs> to weed through. Wow. That's going to be a lot of new hooks. What else do we have in here? Oh, man. Check this out. An old school BASS spinnerbait. They did some promo baits back in the day, and that is a really cool one. That looks to me a whole lot like something that maybe a Bass Pro brand spinnerbait that they rebranded as a BASS one. 
But that is really cool looking, man. Oh, wow. Kind of funny that I had my Rebel Tackle Box out at the beginning of the video. This is awesome. Um, John did mention this. This is an old school Rebel Tackle Box. I think this is the uh, Futura LX. This is almost a flat tackle box. And this thing is pretty wild. I have seen one of these before. You crack it open and it's got a couple of removable trays. So it's got two trays here, one on the left and one on the right. Check this out. You just take them out and then you can access just as many lures down beneath. Oh man, that is awesome. And that is a really clean looking Rebel Tackle Box. Dude, that is awesome. You know, I don't know what I'm gonna put in here. I have picked up a bunch of Rebel Terrestrials as of late. This might be the perfect box to store those guys in. All right, the last thing here, huh. That is interesting. It is a old wooden box of some sort and it says bush on it. I have no idea. That sounds lore-ish. <laughs> what is this? Okay, so when you crack it open, inside is a high roller topwater. Oh, wow, look at that. Um, I do not have a high roller as endorsed by Roland Martin. Huh. And this thing actually says bush on it. Let me see if this thing is openable. Yeah, it is. Oh, wow. That is one pretty, pretty looking topwater bait. So that is an all wooden bait. It has got a single propeller on the back and sort of almost a blue minnow pattern. But check this out. On one side of it, it says bush. By the way, guys, I've been getting a ton of requests for um, updates on retro bass and merch. We did sell out of, I think, everything larger than an XL shirt, unfortunately. I do have those on order, so as soon as I get some double XLs and up, I will drop that info to you guys. In the meantime, um, we did just restock the hats as well, so thanks again, everybody who's ordered those. Um, they're available at txprovisions.com. But of course, I will drop a, a link to that in the description of this video, right where it says Retro Bass and Merch. Well, John, thanks again for the care pack, buddy. It was awesome doing business with you. Until next time, Bass and Buds, keep the carpet side up, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass and Buds.